Welcome back, my friends. Jake here. Currently, we're on day 162 of Russia's disastrous invasion of Ukraine, and the war map that everyone likes to check every day is this one on deepstatemap.live. How is the Ukrainian counteroffensive going in the Kherson region? Are the Russians making progress in the Donbass region? But I personally have been checking a different war map every day, and this is it. This is the price of crude oil per barrel in U.S. dollars. And a huge accomplishment was just made. This is very bad news for Russia. And the price of oil, the price of energy, has fallen below where it was prior to Russia's invasion of Ukraine. So on February 24th, the price of a barrel of crude oil was at $91. And today, the price of oil is only 88 this is a big deal, and I'm going to explain to you why, but I've talked about this in previous videos. About a month ago, I made a video titled, This Man Will Defeat Russia. It's gotten 383,000 views. I highly recommend you watch it if you haven't seen it for a more detailed explanation. The video is 17 minutes long. But basically, as central banks around the world continue to raise interest rates to combat inflation, this is bringing down the price of energy. And the Russian economy, Vladimir Putin, is very dependent on the price of energy in order to fund his government and fund his military and continue this war in Ukraine. So last week, the Federal Reserve in the United States met and they raised interest rates by 75 basis points. This means it's more expensive, more difficult to borrow money. People borrow less, people spend less. This slows down economic activity, which in turn reduces the demand for energy, which in turn reduces the price of energy. So Russia is bringing in less. And its economies and governments all over the world struggling with inflation and raising their central bank interest rates to combat it. The European Central Bank has done it, the Bank of England, uh, the Swiss Bank, the Canadian Bank, South Korea's inflation's at 24, a 24-year high. They're also raising interest rates. Same is true for Australia. So let's talk about what does this mean in dollars for the Russian economy and Russia's ability to financially wage war against Ukraine. So here is an estimate of how much oil this is in thousands of barrels per day, so 8,000 barrels uh, times 1,000 equals 8 million. So we're going to make the assumption, and it could be less, that Russia is currently trying to export for sale 8 million barrels of oil per day. So when energy prices peaked, this was back on, let's see here, this was back on uh, June 7th, Russia was making their... their <laughs> the most amount of money possible. This was the fair market value that Western governments would be paying potentially. At $122 a barrel in total revenue, Russia is bringing in $976 million. This is before operating costs and the cost to ship it around the world. What exactly is their profit margin in order to fund their government, fund their military? I don't have that number specifically right now. But we can see that the price of energy has dropped by almost a quarter, by 25%. So if the price of oil today is around $90 a barrel, then Russia is now only bringing in $720 million a day. And what we need in order to bankrupt Russia to make them economically be unable to continue this war, we need the price of energy, the price of oil to fall below $60 a barrel. I've seen quotes and estimates that their operating cost per, per barrel of oil is uh, in the 50s. So what's happening here is the price of energy is coming down. And I've made this argument and I've had people in the comments say, Jake, there's no way that oil is going to go below $60 a barrel. My counter argument is we were just there. The price of oil on August 19th, 2021 was $62 a barrel. So this is very possible, especially in an economic environment of rising interest rates, where central banks will hold them at those levels until 
inflation is proven to be under 2%. Now, this is especially bad news for Russia, but be because of economic sanctions, Western countries are not buying Russian energy exports at fair market value. So the only way that Russia can get their oil, gas, and coal energy exports out is if they sell them at a discount to large markets such as India and China. And that's currently what is happening. Everyone knows that India and China potentially are not fully participating in sanctions on Russia, but they're also not helping Russia out by giving them fair market value for their exports. India is snapping up cheap Russian oil as they demand a 20% discount in order to buy their exports. China is doing the same thing with oil, gas, and coal. They're only willing to buy Russian exports if they're getting, you know, the friend 20% discount. The problem Russia has is they can't offer this discount if the price of energy for the global markets continues to fall. Because if the Indians and the Chinese can just buy oil from the Saudis, then there's no reason to go through the hassle of dealing with the Russians and their discounts in order to buy their exports. So we are on, we're actually ahead of schedule from where I thought we would be. The fact that it's early August and the price of oil is already down to $88 a barrel. As long as Western banks, central banks continue to hold these interest rates, oil will be back under $60 a barrel, definitely by this winter, December, or January. So that's the prediction I've made in this video. Uh, you'll notice that with this uh, chart, there is an up and down pattern. This is the heartbeat of the markets. It does go down, blips back up, goes down, blips back up. But by December, we will be under $60 a barrel. So the name of the game right now for Ukraine is to do as much damage as possible, break as much stuff, kill as many soldiers. And they're getting the job done with these high Mars missiles. This was a video that went viral. It's very well choreographed. This is obviously Ukrainian military propaganda, but they positioned four HIMARS launchers in this wheat field on a clear day with a blue sky. This is the Ukrainian flag, and they launched off a salvo at the Russians. I just want to show you a little bit of this clip. Wow. This is bad news for the Russians. All the Russian military can do is put out very bizarre propaganda that they've already destroyed all the launchers or the Ukrainians have sold them to the Russians. The Department of Defense uh, in the United States has repeatedly come out saying they know where all the trucks are, and of course they're all still functioning and in operations. So here are some memes that I really enjoy that I found. Russia's dreams have taken the Donbass. Hi Mars, uh, this is all Ukraine has to do in the meantime. Now Ukraine is still planning this counteroffensive in the Kherson region to take place this month, and they've begun distributing these flyers to civilians in the city. And uh, this flyer is pretty interesting. Somebody has translated, so I'll read you what this flyer says. And it says, actions to follow for the civilian population during the liberation of Kherson. Prepare your shelter in advance. Be sure to label it with the word civilians in contrasting paint. Prepare food, water, and medicine supplies with a reserve at least a, a, of a week. Charge your communication devices and additional power supplies. Do not use light as darkness approaches. Do not leave the shelters during street fights. Avoid unnecessary contact with the military until soldiers of the Ukrainian armed forces reach you. Answer questions from your shelter loudly and clearly. Strictly follow all orders. Do not touch the corpses of Russian soldiers. Do not move vehicles and vehicles that block roads. If you know any, any information uh, about the location of Russian soldiers, report it to Ukrainian soldiers immediately. Uh, so this is coming. This is happening, and Ukraine is taking it very serious, and obviously they want to 
minimize the loss of life of their own civilians as much as possible, but it's going to be a hornet's nest trying to get all of these Russians out of the city if they're not willing to flee first. So who are these brave Russian defenders uh, holding on to the city of Kherson right now? And here's a picture that went viral of Russian soldiers posing for this group photo. Uh, and these are the Russian soldiers currently guarding the Anatovsky Bridge. This is the bridge that Ukraine keeps destroying that connects the North Bank to the South Bank of the Dnieper River. And do you notice anything bizarre about this photo? Because I'm seeing a lot of Asian dudes. This guy looks Asian, 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 uh, really Asian, 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 Asian. I also don't understand why this gentleman right here is wearing his ribbons and medals in a war zone. That's some serious E5 energy right there. But you'll notice that a lot of the ethnic minorities uh, in the Russian military have been pushed into Ukraine, for one. But even in Ukraine, they've been pushed to the front lines and being given the most dangerous assignments. Why is it when I watch Victory Day parades or Russian state propaganda TV, I'm seeing all of these uh, beautiful white boys at the front of the lines? In all of these pictures of... Russian military parades, I do not see a single ethnic minority. I only see the ethnic Russians in their shiny uniforms and white gloves prancing around uh, Moscow. Here's an article from Al Jazeera. Russia's ethnic minorities lament the war in Ukraine. Ethnic minority troops are said to be dying in greater numbers than their Slav compatriots in this so-called special military operation. So obviously, Putin's power base, the way that he stays in power, is the ethnic Slavs, the ethnic Russians in Moscow and St. Petersburg, and people from the Caucasus, people from the Far East, people from Central Asia. That is Russia's empire. Those are the ethnic minorities that have been subjugated under the Muscovites' rule over the last couple hundred years, and Russia is using these people brutally. Once again, if you are in ethnic minority, you're more likely to be pressured to join the military with signing contracts. You're then more likely to be sent to Ukraine, and then more likely to be sent to the most dangerous positions like guarding that, that bridge that Ukraine keeps trying to destroy. So even if you are an ethnic minority and a soldier in Ukraine, and you somehow make it back to Russia and you were wounded, how are veterans in Russia currently being treated. And here's a video of a uh, soldier who lost his legs trying to get access to a public bus. And this is how this Russian veteran was treated. Unfortunately, there's no subtitles in the video, but someone in the comment section on Reddit translated it. And this is the exchange between the bus driver and the soldier. Starts with the veteran, I was fighting in the war, Gramps. Sarcastic, I'm happy for you, you should not have gone to war. That is not my problem. I lost two legs. If you lost three, I still wouldn't care. But there are Nazis there, they eat babies, Gramps. Be a decent human being. Son, I can't be a decent human. How can you not be a decent human being? For what did I give up my legs? Probably tried to give them up for your family, but that didn't work. What about denazification? Gramps, let, let's go. This is from a passenger. The veteran continues, we're protecting our motherland. Another passenger on the bus just yells, just run him over. The driver says, let me just remove him and then we will drive on. This is the veteran. What do you think you are going to do? I'm going to call my bros. Where are you going? He 
He then sees the baseball bat and says, Gramps, Gramps, let's not do it like this. The bus driver says, will I have to hit you or will you leave on your own? The veteran then says, you effed up. I will find out where you live, Gramps. You are finished. Wow, Russia is a terrible place. So how are Ukrainian soldiers greeted by people as they get off a bus? They're greeted with hugs and kisses, love and supports. Uh, they're defenders protecting their homes, protecting their families. Bad news for Russia is that Ukraine successfully took down a 1 million bot farm uh, that was spreading disinformation within Russia. So this was uh, achieved by the Ukrainian cyber police, the SSU, and this was a bot farm that was operating inside Ukraine in three different cities. And the bot farm dismantled by SSU was located in uh, Kyiv, Kharkiv, and Vinitizia, and relied on one million bots to spread disinformation. They did this with 5,000 separate SIM cards registering new social media accounts, and they were using 200 proxy servers that spoofed actual IP addresses. So in the comments section of my video and other videos, anytime you see these absurd comments spreading disinformation or supporting Russia, more than likely it's one of these bot farms just giving generic messages, generic answers, and it's, it's not actual real people. More bad news for Vladimir Putin specifically is the West finally sanctioned his girlfriend, she's a former Olympic gymnast. This is what she looks like, and obviously, more or less, she's innocent, but this was a threat that the West was making to hopefully apply pressure to Putin to get him to negotiate or potentially pull back to his own borders. But after six months, you eventually have to follow through on your threats, so they finally sanctioned Putin's girlfriend in addition to... Um, some more Russian oligarchs. I went on her Wikipedia page and it says she's 39. Putin is currently 69, so of course uh, she's young enough to be his daughter. Here's a picture that went viral of Ukrainians in Kyiv. This is outside the city of Irpin, uh, just trying to enjoy their summer. Uh, they're, they're wearing their bathing suits, they're swimming in the water, and in the background, Pretty much the entire country of Ukraine, there are buildings that Russia has destroyed. Here's a video that went viral that's kind of heartbreaking to watch, but as the Russian military approaches certain areas in the Donbass, Ukrainian soldiers are going door to door trying to gently convince the local residents, more than often very elderly people, that they have to evacuate, that the Russian military will bomb and destroy their homes. The, the Russian military will bomb and kill these people. And these are some of the heartbreaking reactions of these local residents who don't want to flee. Ольга попросила вас забрати і евакуювати з цього міста. Вона вас, підождіть, вона вас жде в Дніпрі. Ви куди? Ось сюди, за це. Спасибо вам, спасибо. Солдати приїжджають, нас кормлять, гуманітарку привозять, одягають. Кому ми потрібні? Тут кому ви потрібні? Собі. Ну і там собі. Набираєте? Батьки родилися, дідусь родилися, жовмерли, я поїду, нікуди я не поїду. Я вам запишу я свій телефон. Україна про вас не забуває, безпокоїться за вас. А чого ж ви плачете? Радуйся, вже вище. Все. Все буде добре. Чого? It's heartbreaking. Final graphic I want to share with you guys is a uh, public opinion to poll is, do you think Ukraine is moving in the right direction? Despite the war and falling economy, 73% of Ukrainians believe their country is moving in the right direction now. The spirit of the Ukrainian people is strong, despite what everything that Russia has done to them. And this public opinion poll is actually very fascinating because you can see there was a spike in, you know, approval or optimism in Ukraine 
in 2014 when they had their revolution. It then immediately fell back down to basically the teens. Then in 2019, with the election of President Zelensky, there was once again renewed optimism that potentially Ukraine could uh, pull away from Russia's sphere of influence and become a free and democratic society. However, even with the election of Zelensky, it fell back down to very low levels, uh, very, people being very pessimistic. However, with the external threats and the attack by Russia, this has unified the Ukrainian people. We're now seeing, once again, approval and optimism ratings in the 70s, the highest it's ever been, basically. That's all for this update video. If you found it informative, give me a thumbs up. It really helps out with my channel. If you have any comments or questions or know something I don't, let me know down below. I love hearing from you guys. Till the next video, take care, be safe.